Welcome back, Cutie Pie. Let's talk about the founders of Hex versus Zen. We are going to go through some deep items that you've never seen before. I'm going to talk about how Jack Levine sees Bitcoin. We're going to go through that. And it's very important because it goes through the philosophy of what's going on behind Zen versus Hex. Why might one coin go up? Why might the other go down or up? And it's got nothing to do with the inflation and stuff, okay? This is something you've never heard before. So Jack Levin did an interview and he goes through each of the coins. Now, obviously, before we even start, I have already made a video on this. This is what I call a closed circle Ponzi, okay? Say, okay, we've got a coin here, Zen. And then you get some NFTs and then you do some lending and then you'll do a flash loan with another thing and then there's a reflect token and then there's another hex clone called Nex. Okay, this is closed circle and the whole goal is to distract you from the inflationary Zen. That's usually what happens in crypto. Now, I'm not going to be stupid enough to say, oh, Jack Levin owns all the Zen and he's going to dump. No, he's the one putting in liquidity. Obviously, no one else is. So... This might just be a case of the good, the right heart with the wrong ID. It might be the case of that, right? And that's no pun intended. So what might end up happening is we're going to go through this, all right? So we have the philosophy of Bitcoin on our main agenda here. So if you listen to Jack's interviews, no one's ever spoken about this, but if you listen to him, he speaks about how he wants a currency for the people. He wants it to be accessible to everybody. And he wants to distribute to everybody. And he relies on the core philosophy of Bitcoin to guide him. So we have the early Bitcoin chart here, okay? We have the early Bitcoin chart. So this is Jack's perspective. And I want you to understand this because this is why you're gonna see a, a, a difference when we move on to the next fella. So with Jack, he saw Bitcoin be released to the world. Yeah, Satoshi releases Bitcoin, free open code. Anyone who wants to participate, come and participate. What ended up happening was Bitcoin went up. So there was Bitcoin and USD in a pool. And this was the miracle. Bitcoin was released and people decided to place USD in the pool and take Bitcoin out. Right, so people did this even though miners were placing Bitcoin into the pool and taking their money out. So non-believers were doing this, right? This is the thing. Non-believers, let's say three pe three unit three people, let's just say three people here. Right? But this is what the crypto miracle was, right? With Bitcoin, we had ten people believe so right, believers here, ten people. So this was the actual crypto miracle. The miracle is he created a currency, an internet currency, and even though like it's come out of nowhere, there were more people who believed than didn't believe, and the price went up. More people put their USD in. Now, this is where we get to the critical issue. All right, this is why I made this video. Jack, so let's get Jack's head. Jack saw this, and he said, aha, a community was formed, it's because the currency was given out for free. That's why it went up. Okay, so he is focusing on that part, the fact that it was given out for free. Okay, that is where his eyesight is on. He's focused on, aha, see, so if I want to make a Bitcoin, which is what he's actually spoken about, listen to his interviews. He loved the fact that Bitcoin, it, it start, he, he likes that story, right? Which we all do love that story, right? But he drew the wrong conclusions. So he's saying that, yes, okay, you know, we re released the currency for free. But see, Bitcoin went up, Bitcoin went up, Bitcoin killed it. But I want to tell you something, friends. Bitcoin went up for a different reason. So, you know, you most people don't know that, <laughs> obviously. You had Roger Ver, Roger Ver, who, like, accumulated. Let's get Roger here, all right. So Roger accumulated, like, you know, 240,000 up to 400,000 Bitcoin under a dollar, Okay. So Roger believed in Bitcoin, but he probably didn't care 
how much its price went up, okay? He just believed so much in decentralization, government being unable to touch this money, and the tech, and we've never seen something like this before. That's why he got in. He didn't know it was gonna go to $100,000. He just thought, you know, this is the greatest thing ever. That's it, this is the greatest thing ever. I'm gonna get in. And he went super hard. And people after him got in, probably because the price kept going up. That's the difference. And then that set a trend. So we see the price go up, and then we say, okay, why did the price go up? And we attach false narratives to it as humans. So we saw the price go up and we say, aha, the price went up because Bitcoin's decentralized. And that's why the price kept going up and going up. And that's actually what happens, right? You think back, that's why we all think the price went up. But actually, that's really not why the price went up. You know, the price went up is just because people placed USD in the pool. And then that was feeding onto itself the perpetual cycle. We just, it's humans, man, you know, we attach narratives. Okay, the price goes up. Okay, it's because we're gonna change the world, fight government, all this stuff. And see, notice how the narrative's changing now. The narrative's changing to something else, right? The narrative is changing now. So Bitcoin's actually slowing down and the narrative's changing. So Jack sees this and he goes, okay, I've got to replicate this, right? Which, let's go on, right? Richard Hart sees it too. And he says, yeah, I'm going to replicate this, but this is the difference, right? So let's delete Roger. The difference is these guys are looking at the same piece of information and they are drawing different conclusions, okay? That is what you got to understand. This is very common in history with investors and inventors, everything. Two people will look at the same thing and have completely different conclusions. It's kind of amazing. I'll give you other ones too, right? So... But the focus is Jack sees the distribution part as the reason why everyone loved it. That's why, right? But Richard Hart sees the fact that you had manipulation, right? And he uses this word, maybe not directly that word, but he says Satoshi cared about the price going up, okay? Satoshi cares about the price going up. That's why he put the halvening in there. Bitcoin doesn't need a halvening at all, but he put it in there because he wants to create an upwards price shock because he knew that's what attracts people. Jack sees that as like, oh, he just put it in for whatever reason, okay? So that is a key, key, key difference. Richard sees, okay, you know, if you took the price go up part, Richard believes, and I, I agree with him too, right? If, if Richard believes if you didn't have this price go up part, you might not even have a whole crypto industry when you think about it. Bitcoin would not have done what it did unless it went super fast and did this. And Satoshi also spoke about it too. So that is the key fundamental difference. They're viewing the same information. Jack sees the distribution part as what you've got to focus on. That's why you see Zen. I mean, Zen's being freely distributed, right? And Hex has a philosophy or store of value, okay? So now, obviously, Zen, has been its price has been going down. But if you look at what... Jack's thoughts are, he says, with, you know, this is something to think about. He goes, one, have expectations, right? With Bitcoin, it was there were no expectations, by the way. He also says, two, we're going to make more closed circle, more closed circle Ponzi games, right? And that's what they are. That's just what they are. We're going to make more, like, products. So this, these closed circle Ponzi games, right, you have, let's draw a circle here, you have the Zen economy, Zen ecosystem here, okay? And in, in when you do these games, you basically get everyone to go around and around and around and around, and the pie never gets bigger, all right? But when you go to Hex, the marketing message that Richard has like put down for everyone to do is make the community bigger. We are the community. Do your own work. Have no expectations. Do your own work. So Hex doesn't have these closed circle Ponzi game. Hex, everybody in Hex is said, go recruit, go recruit, you know, get people on, share the message, get people off exchanges, get them onto into our community. We're growing. We have the best price performance. You can get yield. We, we have better features than Bitcoin. It's easier for us to go up, all right? All these things, right? All these noble causes or, un, or you know, causes that you might not agree with, it doesn't matter. They are focused on growing this circle. That's what everyone's focus is. And you can see how now visually you're like, okay, 
wow, you know, there's two different, two different things going on here. Someone's focused on growing the circle, the other person's focused on, well, the thing is just gonna do circles. Look, but I'm not gonna do this devil's advocate stuff. I'm gonna tell you now, yes, of course, Jack wants the Zen ecosystem to grow. He does, however, I believe, not even I believe, right, he's told us that. He saw Bitcoin, okay, he saw Bitcoin launch, okay, and he saw, see, when you build stuff, people come, people come, right? But don't fall into one trap. Don't underestimate competition. When Bitcoin did this up only part, there was no competition, okay? It was literally the Genesis crypto blockchain. There is one Satoshi, there is one story, there's one of this, all right? Jack is not playing in that same level field now. He doesn't know it. He is playing in the level field of 20,000 coins on CoinGecko, and everyone's saying, hey, we'll do yield, we'll do NFTs, we'll do metaverse, we'll do gaming, we'll do all this stuff. Yeah, it's a completely different game. The people, I want you to know my final message, the people who bought this, they are such small numbers, friends. They're only like 100,000 people because the market cap was so small and the entire crypto industry was tiny. This was the crypto industry, right? So that up arrow, it, I know it's, oh, it's sick gains, but it's a tiny amount of people, man. It's literally like 100,000, no, it's 10,000 people, you know? 10 to 100,000 people did this, right? But now, now, Bitcoin, for example, here, you need millions of people. It's not 10,000, and it's a different subset of people in the demographic demographics now and it's the same thing with hex and zen okay so two guys see the same data they reach two different conclusions right you watch my other videos you know how i think this plays out but we're gonna keep a close eye on who we think is like not gonna make it just in case something surprises us until next time